Now that we've created the various migration policies that we plan to use when building our migration projects, the next consideration is what's called connections. So over on the left hand side, under settings, I'm going to click connections. Connections point to your data sources and destinations. By building the connections now, essentially pre-staging them, when you get to creating your migration projects, all you'll really have to do is pick them from the dropdown. That's the first step, is to create the project and then save it, and then you can go in and do the individual mappings, the individual teams to teams, mailboxes to mailboxes, OneDrives to OneDrives, and so on. But we need the connections to be there first. So in connections, I click Create Connection, and then over here we can give it a name, and then we can tell it which type of connection we're creating. So like everything else, this is one of those things you have to plan out. If I'm doing a multi-platform, as in Exchange, Groups, Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint type of migration, I may not be doing them all at the same time. Or maybe we're breaking the workload up. Some people are in Fly and they're doing Exchange. Somebody else maybe is doing Teams. However you're going about it, you're going to have to make the connections for each that you can use in the project. So let's say I want to do a Teams connection and I've got two different tenants, so I'm going to want to make a connection for each one. You can see the tenants down here under Tenant. And if you're wondering, where did these come from? Well, remember, these are actually configured at the AppPoint Online Services level under your apps and or your service accounts. So let's say I'm going to make a connection to my 056. And if we scroll down, it's asking us for the container for AutoMap. Now your auto mapping doesn't come up until after you create and save your migration project. You can go in and you can tell it the specific team to team and so on, like I mentioned earlier. But it needs to know what container. Now again, the container comes from AOS and it comes from the scan profiles. So remember, which one's the source and which one's the destination? In our scenario here, I'm using 056 as my source and 730 as my destination. But that's where that's going to come from. Select it and click Scan History. And we have our different containers that are being made by object type. So that's where that is coming from. If you haven't already watched it, please watch our how-to video on how to set up your auto discovery scans for Fly. Now below that, the credentials, what app should it use in order to try to connect to that Microsoft 365 tenant? Well, only one. It's not going to let me pick one that's for a different tenant. And the same goes for the service account. If the service account is needed, again, even though I have multiple service accounts and apps up here at the AOS level, by picking the appropriate tenant, it sees what I've pre-staged as far as the connection. If everything looks good, I click Save. And now there is my first Teams connection. Now I need to create the destination connection. So I click Create Connection again. I pick the appropriate tenant. I make sure that it's set to Teams. We select our app and we select our service account and we save. Now I'm going to continue to do that through my various connection types. So if I'm doing email migration, it would be the same exact thing. What's your source and your destination? You build the connections, you save. If I wanted to do SharePoint, same thing. SharePoint Online, OneDrive, and so on. How you are handling this in the course of your migration is up to you. You may be doing it in stages, so we focus on Exchange first, build your Exchange connections, run your migration projects, and then move on to SharePoint, and then move on to OneDrive. Or maybe, as I mentioned earlier, you've got several team members who are doing this side by side. Maybe you're the only one doing them, you're doing them side by side, and ultimately you will schedule all those jobs to run. So maybe you're doing all of this setup across all of your various objects, and then you're going to go build your projects. How you handle that is up to you, but your connections of all your various types are going to be necessary for when you get to doing this.
Thanks for watching this short video on how to create a connection in anticipation of building a migration project in AvPointFly.